Welcome to Excel magic trick number 1,334. Hey, if you want to download this Excel workbook, Excel magic trick 1,334 start or the finished file so you can follow along. Click on the link below the video. Hey, we've got a great video here. We're going to compare Power Query and formulas to make this report right here. Now, Let's look at this report. We have row header criteria product Bellin. We need to calculate total units, the max units, and then we need to actually extract the sales rep name based on two conditions or criteria. We need to find the sales rep within all of the Bellin records where the units are 314. Now, I'm going to go ahead and delete this. That's the end result. Again, we're going to see this with formulas and Power Query. All right, so total units with one conditions is easy. In Excel, we simply use the sum ifs function, the sum range. And I've already converted this to an Excel table, and I've actually hidden a bunch of rows just so it's easy to select the columns. The sum range, well, I need to add amongst all these. Anytime you're using the Excel table feature, it lists the name of the table. This table is named sales, and it lists the field name in square brackets. That's the field name. Comma, criteria range, the entire product column. Table name, field name, comma, and then we have our criteria, a simple relative cell reference. Sum ifs, we'll look through the product column, find all of the balance, and then add all the numbers from the units column. Control Enter. Double click and send it down. I go to the last cell, F2. It's working fine. Max units. Now I'm using Office 365 Excel 2016 Insider Edition. So I have the max ifs function. If you don't have max ifs, that's the formula you can use to calculate the max based on one condition. And if you want to see a complete history of all the different ways to calculate max and min conditions, that's your video. All right, so I'm simply going to use equals max ifs. Max range, same units. Comma, criteria range, same criteria. Product column, comma, and then the same criteria. Control Enter, double click, and send it down. Now, both of these calculations use the row header as our condition or our criteria. Now, when we get to sales rep with max sale, we actually have two conditions. We actually need to look all the way through this column, find all the balance. Then once we isolate all those, we need to find the single max units. And that sort of previews how Power Query will think of it. When we're thinking about it in Excel, it's actually, can we find the name in this column based on two conditions? Really, we're looking something up. So we're looking up with two lookup values, and we want to return the sales rep name. Now, I'm going to assume there's no duplicates. If there were duplicates, then you have this situation, one lookup value. We're actually, we actually have two lookup values, but we're going to join them to create one lookup value. So you'd have one lookup value to return multiple records. There's your video about how to do that. So we're assuming no duplicates. I'm using the index function, which is a lookup function, array argument right there. That's all the items I potentially want to look up, and I'm trying to find a sales rep name. So there's the sales rep column, comma. Now I need to match and find the row number where there's a Bellin and a 314. So if I'm trying to find relative position or row number for index, I use the match function. Now lookup value, match is expecting a single lookup value to find the relative position. I'm going to click on max units, and then I'm going to use the join symbol, shift 7, that's ampersand, and then click on the product name. By doing that, I've taken two values, and now they're considered one value. Now, I actually can't highlight this and hit the F9 like I normally do because my video recorder is using F9. So I'm going to have to go up to formulas and click calculate 9. You can see the screen tip says F9. And there it is. That went from two values into one value, Control-Z, comma. 
lookup array, we need to do the same thing, but with two columns, because match expects a single column. I'm highlighting units first, because over here I highlighted units first, using the same ampersand, and now I'm highlighting the product column. I can click on the screen tip, lookup array argument, come up to calculate now, and instantly I have a single column with all of those joined values, Control-Z. Now, that is an array operation. The operation is join, and it's not a single item and another single item. It's an array of items in both cases. So we're actually going to have to use a special keystroke. That argument right there will not calculate array operations unless we use that special keystroke. And we'll do that when we enter the formula, comma. The match type is exact match because the two columns are not sorted. I type a 0, close parentheses. That entire row number, match will deliver the correct relative position or row number, close parentheses. And the special keystroke is Control, Shift, and Enter. I immediately look up to the formula bar to verify that the curly brackets were put in. When I used Control, Shift, Enter, that's me telling Excel this is an array formula. Those curly brackets are Excel telling you that it understood and calculated it as an array formula. I'm going to double click and send this down. And there we go. There is our report. We did adding with one condition. In this case, it was Bellin. Max with one condition. In this case, it was Bellin. And then here, we retrieve the name based on two lookup values. Now we want to see how to do this with Power Query. I'm going to click in a single cell in this Excel table, go up to Data. And in Excel 2016, Power Query is Get and Transform. If you have Excel 2013 or 10, you have to download Power Query as an extra tab. Whichever version you have, you find the From Table, click it. That'll bring our table into Power Query. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come over and name this. Final Report and Enter. Now, in our data set, our first task, just like with our formulas, is to get a unique list from this column and then make an aggregate calculation on total units. We need to add and get the max. Now, in Power Query, doing calculations with conditions or criteria, like with sum ifs, max ifs, count ifs, or pivot tables. In Power Query and databases like Access or using SQL, we use the group by feature. Now, our goal is to get a unique list and then make aggregate calculations. So I select the column I want to get my unique list from. I click Group by. There's the field where we're going to get a unique list. We're going to come down here, and our first column is going to be called Total Units tab. To get total units, we need to use the sum function. And the column that we're going to make a sum function aggregate calculation on is unit sold. Now, we could come down here and click Add Aggregation and do Max, because remember, our formulas looked at the criteria from product. But we're going to do this a different way because we actually need to get the name of the person who sold the maxed units. In order to do that, we're going to add an aggregation here. But we're going to do something much different. We want to get, as an extra column, all the records for each one of the products. So remember, we have Bellin and Quad. I need to actually return the table and then look through every record for Bellin and then Quad, get the max and the name of the person who sold those max units. So I'm going to call this Get Records for Product. Now we come to Operation, and we say All Rows. Notice we're not allowed to select anything here, because when you select All Rows, it looks up here for the criteria. So because group by product gives us a unique list, now we're going to have, for each one of the items in the unique list, a table with all of the rows or records. Then from that, we'll be able to extract our max and sales rep name. I'm going to click OK. The first part of our report is done, a unique list of products. 
there's the aggregate calculation total. Now let's look at this column. If I click off to the side, not on the word table, but in the white, there's our preview. These are all the records for Bellin. If I come down to quad, click in the white, there's all the records for the quad product. Now this is returning a table for each record. I need to add yet another column that adds the record that has max value and the sales rep name. So now I'm going to go up to Add Column, Add a Custom Column. I'm going to call this Get Record for Max Unit Sold. And the function we're going to use to look into that table, the table is right there, is Table dot max open parentheses this means we can get a max value from a table now i come over here and there's the table for each unique product i double click that now that's the entire table we need to tell table dot max which column to retrieve the max value from so comma and the second argument will be in double quotes spelled correctly Units sold, and double quotes, close parentheses. Now, whereas this column was returning a table, this will return a record. When I click OK, check that out. It even tells us. And if I click in the white, there's the record for max units sold from the Bellin table right here. Down for the sunshine, there's the whole table. There's the one record from that table that lists max units sold, 959, and the sales rep. Now, we don't need this column anymore, so I click at the top, right click, remove. Now, there's a double pointing arrow to both sides, which means we can expand. I'm going to click the Expand button. I'm unchecking Select All and this one down here, because I do not want the original column name from up here. All I want from that record is the sales rep name and the unit sold. Now I click OK, and boom, just like that, I have my max unit sold from all the Bellin records and the sales rep name for that max unit. Now I'm going to click on unit sold, go over to transform, date, type, and I'm going to say whole number. Now I'm going to double click and call this max unit sold, and Enter. Now I'm going to click on the sales rep, data type, text. Double click sales rep, and I'm going to name this sales rep name who made max sale, and Enter. Now I'm going to do two last things. I'm going to move the units column, clicking on the top and dragging it over. I want it before the sales rep name. Now I'm going to come to product, click the drop down, and sort A to Z. That is pretty amazing. There's our name. There's all of our steps. Now I can go to Home, Close and Load, Close and Load 2. Table is fine. I want this on the existing sheet. Click the Collapse button. I'm going to click Be Dangerous here and click like in F11. By the way, I highlighted all the rows in the table and already unhid. So when I put this here, it won't be partially hidden. When I click OK and then click Load, there is our report. All right, so in this video, we saw how to create total units, max units based on a single condition, and then look up sales rep name for max units with a formula and with Power Query. All right, we'll see you next video.